relaxing. I'm going to do a reading. I'm going to move between the daily lesson and the text. Lesson 287, you are my goal, my father, only you. So this is Jesus changing the goal for this world. I'm relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my body and not offering resistance to his teaching. You are my goal, my father, only you. Where would I go but heaven? What could be a substitute for happiness? Now I'm going to go over to the text. I'm in the section of the picture of the crucifixion. And this is what Jesus is telling us the purpose of the world was, is. Are you ready? It is not will for life, but wish for death that is the motivation for this world. Its only purpose is to prove guilt real. Again, its only purpose is to prove guilt real. Now, let's go back to Jesus' words in the daily lesson. You are my only goal, my Father. Only you. No worldly thought or act or feeling has a motivation other than this. Again, its only purpose is to prove guilt real. No worldly thought or act or feeling has a motivation other than this. These are the witnesses that are called forth to be believed and lend conviction to the system they speak for and represent. And each has many voices speaking to your brother and yourself in different tongues. And yet to both, the message is the same. Adornment of the body seeks to show how lovely are the witnesses for guilt. Again, adornment of the body seeks to show how lovely are the witnesses for guilt. Concerns about the body demonstrate how frail and vulnerable is your life, how easily destroyed is what you love. Depression speaks of death and vanity of real concern with anything at all. The strongest witness to futility, which bolsters all the rest and helps them paint the picture in which sin is justified, is sickness in whatever form it takes. The sick have reason for each one of their unnatural desires and strange needs. For who could live a life so soon cut short and not esteem the worth of passing joys? So he says, we, we come into this world and we figure we're only here for a minute and we're going to get sick and die. So I want to enjoy as much physical pleasure and physical adornment as possible. What pleasures could there be that will endure? And are not the frail, frail entitled to believe that every stolen scrap of pleasure is their righteous payment for their little lives? 
their death will pay the price for all of them, if they enjoy their benefits or not. The end of life must come, whatever way that life be spent. So take pleasure in the quickly passing in the ephemeral. These are not sins, but witnesses unto the, unto the strange belief that sin and death are real. And innocence and sin will end alike with the termination of the grave. If this were true, there would be reason to remain content, content to seek for passing joys and cherish little pleasures where you can. But in this picture is the body not perceived as neutral and without a goal inherent in itself, for it becomes the symbol of reproach, the sign of guilt, whose consequences still are there to see, so that the cause can never be denied. Your function is to prove to him that sin can have no cause. How futile must it be to see yourself a picture of the proof that what your function is can never be. The Holy Spirit's picture changes not the body into something it is not. It only takes away from it all signs of accusation and of blamefulness. Pictured without a purpose, it is neither sick nor well, nor bad nor good. No grounds are offered that it may be judged in any way at all. It has no life, but neither is it dead. It stands apart from all experience of fear or love, for now it witnesses to nothing yet, its purpose being open and the mind made free again to choose what it is for. Now it is not condemned, but waiting for a pur purpose to be given that it may fulfill the function that it will receive. Within this empty space from which the goal of sin has been removed is heaven free to be remembered. Here its peace can come and perfect healing take the place of death. The body can become a sign of life, a promise of redemption, and a breath of immortality to those grown sick from the breathing in of fetid scent of death. Let it have healing as its purpose. Then it will send forth the message it received, and by its health and loveliness proclaim the truth and value that it represents. Let it receive the power to represent an endless life forever unattacked, and to your brother let its message be, Behold me, brother. At your hand I live. The simple way to let this be achieved is merely this, to let the body have no purpose from the past when you were sure you knew its purpose was to foster guilt. For this insists your crippled picture is a lasting sign of what it represents. This leaves no space in which a different view, another purpose, can be given it. You do not know its purpose. You but gave illusions of a purpose to a thing you made to hide your function from yourself. This thing without a purpose cannot hide the function that the Holy Spirit gave. Let then its purpose and your function both be reconciled at last and seen as one. You are my goal, my Father, only you. You see, the body's purpose, the creation of the body, was the goal of guilt.
Thank you.